Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we will be trying to boot Android from a freaking CD. But wait, it gets weirder. The device we are booting it on is going to be this Apple TV first generation. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let me explain the setup a little bit if you haven't watched the last video about the Linux bootloader for Apple TV. This is basically a follow-up to that video, so you may consider watching it. So here we have, of course, the Apple TV first generation, which we are trying to boot Android on. And to its singular USB port, I connected a powered USB hub. This gives me the flexibility to connect any USB device I want. One of them is, of course, a keyboard and also a dongle for a uh, wireless mouse. And, of course, a DVD drive. Something the Apple TV, of course, never had. And from this DVD drive, I want to boot Android using this CD here. On the Apple TV, I installed my Linux bootloader from the last video. That allows us to easily boot Linux distros from different storage media, for example, from a CD. And since Android is based on Linux, we can also boot it using this bootloader. So let's try to boot Android. So I burned every version of Android that I used in the last video onto disks. And uh, let's see if we can get one of them running. So as you can see, the Apple TV finally booted. And we have a new mount point called SR0, which indicates that we have a disk drive connected. So let's select the kernel from there. And the initRD as well. And we want to automatically set root because I don't know yet what the parameters are going to be. 15 minutes later. Okay, this doesn't seem to work. So I need to find out what kernel parameters this disk actually needs in order to boot Android. I didn't show this in the last video, but if I want to find out the kernel command line parameters, what I usually do is get another notebook, in this case my trusty Acer Aspire 1, and uh, try to boot the Linux or Android or whatever I want to boot uh, from there, and print the kernel command line, so I can then type this in to the Apple TV bootloader. So this is what I'm going to show you now. Okay, so let's go to the console and type in cat slash proc slash cmd line. What this does is it prints us the kernel command line that we booted the current kernel from. Now we can take this and try it with the Apple TV bootloader. Okay, let's type in our kernel command line. Okay, let's see if it boots. Okay, it lost USB power, which is uh, usual. Okay, but it doesn't come back. Okay, so it's now quite a bit later and I actually have another idea. So even back when I did the Android on Apple TV video, none of the Android versions actually worked well on this Apple TV. Then I also remembered that I got a comment on this video that told me to use a version of Android x86 that is not uh, depending on SSE3 instructions. So the CPU that we have here, so the Intel Pentium M, does not support SSE3 instructions. I think I talked about that in the macOS on Apple TV video, but I actually totally forgot about that fact until um, I got this comment. So I found the version of Android 4.4 that does not need SSE3 instructions. So let's try this version. It's literally the last hope I've got to get this working on the Apple TV. Okay, so let's see. Select the kernel, select the initRD, and type in our kernel command line. Okay, let's see if it works. As usual, the disk spins up. We lose USB connection while the kernel is rebooting. And we get USB back. Okay, so it actually works. Now let's see if it actually boots. So it's now 15 minutes later and it actually booted. <laughs> Finally. Okay, so let's see. Welcome. It's still very slow. <laughs> let's be completely honest here. We're running Android from a CD. 
not a DVD. It's actually a CD. We're running Android from a CD. <laughs> so, I mean, I think we gotta cut it some slack. I might actually make a video where I try to install this on an SSD and see if it works a bit better. Because it feels actually faster than the Android versions that I tested in the last uh, Android on Apple TV video. So let's go to settings. Oh, there's so much of a delay between moving the mouse and actually seeing what it's doing. Every time I do an action, like I click somewhere or I move the mouse, I can hear the CD spin back up when it's actually probably like reading the files for the settings app from the CD. <laughs> I don't know, but I, <laughs> I think that's super funny. Running Android from a CD on an Apple TV. I mean, the weird part should actually be that we're actually running Android on an Apple TV. But not only uh, are we doing that, no, we're running it from a CD, which is even more funny. So let's see the Easter egg about tablet. And it's so slow. And oh, it actually says Apple TV 1,1 here. <laughs> That's also interesting. <laughs> Manufacturer Apple Android version 444. <laughs> That's super cursed. Okay, let's see. I don't know how often you have to click it. Was it five times? Ah, here it is. We have the KitKat logo. And the little Easter egg from Android 4.4. Ah, yeah, and we've never opened uh, full screen, which is telling us here. I mean, let's be honest. We've all seen what Android KitKat looks like, uh, so I think... I can stop this test here, but um, yeah, we were actually able to run Android <laughs> from a freaking CD. <laughs> so that's it for now. I think that was super fun. We ran Android on an Apple TV from a freaking CD and it actually worked better than I would have thought. It worked better than in the last video where I tried Android on the Apple TV and that makes me want to try it from a real hard drive. Maybe even an M.2 SSD. Stay tuned if you want to see that. Also, if you want to try the bootloader yourself, a ready-to-run image and the source code on GitHub are linked in the description. Just use DD or an imaging tool like Etcher to put it on a USB stick and you're ready to go. You can also contribute to the project there if you want. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more shenanigans like this, maybe me trying to install Android on an M.2 SSD and booting it from the Apple TV, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.